Interference in Wi-Fi is anything that corrupts or modifies the original signal. It is usually from sources like non-Wi-Fi transmitters, multipath fading, co-channel and adjacent channel Wi-Fi devices. Interference may occur between waves of an identical, similar, or harmonically related frequency as well as multipath components. Interference occurs at both layer 1 and layer 2. Layer 1 interference comes from many common non-802.11 sources, such as microwaves, X10 cameras, alarm systems, Bluetooth, remote control devices, cordless phones, and even weather radar. This type of interference disrupts the physical carrier sense of Wi-Fi communications, effectively disrupting the medium itself. 802.11 devices will detect this, but not as a transmission from another device which it's trying to communicate with or contend with for the medium. Therefore, they will attempt to transmit and their transmissions will most likely collide with the noise. This causes the intended receiver to never receive the signal, which will now not send back an acknowledgement to the transmitter. Without receiving an acknowledgement from the receiver, the original sender will wait until it receives an acknowledgement to a certain amount of time. It's called the acknowledgement timeout threshold. When that is expired, it will then try to gain access to the medium again by contending and try to retransmit the signal. Some clients will try up to 32 times. A high retransmission rate is an indication of physical layer interference within your wireless network. Layer 2 interference sources are things such as access points and client devices. At Layer 2, a device can detect another device's transmission when conducting a clear channel assessment. At 802.11, every frame has a duration field used to tell other stations how long they need to wait before trying to transmit. This is part of the way collision avoidance works in Wi-Fi networking. Too many devices on the same channel and within the same physical area will create undesirable contention domain sizes and degrade performance. Traditionally, this was called co-channel interference. However, it is not really interference in the same general way that noise is interference. It is simply an increase in the contention for the medium. It will slow down communications, but is not noise. Adjacent overlapping channel interference is interference more like the noise on layer one. It happens in 2.4 gigahertz when devices are communicating on overlapping channels. They are not able to decode each other's signals and treat those signals as if they are simply noise. A good physical site survey should reveal the noise at layer one and the channels being used at layer two, allowing you to plan your deployment around those. Co-channel interference. Co-channel interference occurs whenever there are two basic service sets in close enough proximity on the same channel. This can be access points that have overlapping coverage or clients on the edge of two basic service sets overlapping. In the example here, the client on the left is associated with the AP and basic service set one. The client on the right is associated with the AP and basic service set two. The clients can cause co-channel interference with each other if they are in range of each other and potentially even cause CCI on the access point to which they are not associated. CCI occurs within a channel and not within a basic service set because stations, both APs and clients alike, must acknowledge frames from other basic service sets in the same channel if they are received with significant signal strength. Co-channel interference is nothing more than an increase in the number of devices within a single contention domain. It is not the same as interference from other non-802.11 sources such as microwaves or radar, but will impact your communications nonetheless. The largest source of CCI is client stations on the edge of overlapping cells using the same channel. To reduce this, you will need to implement a proper channel plan taking into account three-dimensional space, which may impact things above or below you. CCI occurs more often in the 2.4 gigahertz space than in the five gigahertz space due to the more limited number of non-overlapping channels available in 2.4 gigahertz. 
you will see a three channel plan of one, six, and 11 used quite often because one and six do not overlap with each other. Six and 11 do not overlap and one and 11 do not overlap. The key is to reduce the number of times the same channels are used on overlapping cells as much as possible. Some people will, use, will actually disable 2.4 gigahertz on some of the access points throughout the environment to help accomplish this. Adjacent channel interference, or ACI, is caused when channels overlap by design, like 2.4 gigahertz channels, or when non-overlapping channels cause side lobe interference, like 5 gigahertz channels. 2.4 gigahertz channels are 5 megahertz apart on their center frequency and 20 or 22 megahertz wide depending upon the modulation techniques used. Therefore, it's a certainty that adjacent channels will overlap and cause interference in 2.4 gigahertz. In the image shown here, we have an overlay of the center frequency for channel one and channel two. When adjacent channels overlap, they cause adjacent channel interference, ACI, which can manifest as corrupt frames or simply prevent communications due to energy detected in 2.4 gigahertz. In 2.4 gigahertz, ACI can be prevented within your controlled networks by using channels 1, 6, and 11. However, in areas where neighbor wireless LANs can be seen, if they are using channels 2, 5, 7, 10, or 11 through 14, ACI may exist regardless of your network settings. This can be mitigated by carefully planning channel selections nearest these neighbor networks.